guys, today I've got a great Copic marker tutorial for you guys that will help you create a lineless Copic marker piece. So keep on watching. Hey guys, today we are going to do an alcohol marker and colored lead tutorial. And we're going to be using the Pilot Color Eno in their pink and you guys can find links below in the description for everything you're going to need and hopefully my camera will be able to pick it up. I'm going to zoom in. So I have sort of a base sketch going. I want to finish my base sketch. I want to finish drawing this out. And I wanted to do it for you guys because there aren't enough drawing tutorials here on this channel. So of course we're going to be drawing cute little Kara from my comic 7 inch Kara. Placing in the eyes. Sort of refining the jaw. I do want to make sure I have an eraser on hand. Grab that. It's like, <clears throat> sorry, it looks like the camera is picking everything up. And I apologize for all the weird horse throat slash frog in the throat slash, um, like, you know, that weird, like, scratching noises. Um, I am still sort of recovering. Almost there, but I'm at like the frog in your throat stage. And then the cute jug ears. After I finish sketching everything in, I'll start cleaning things up since there are a few extemporaneous lines. And then a little hand lettering. Sketch it out first. Then we'll use a small vinyl eraser just to get rid of some of these extra lines here. You don't have to clean the whole thing up, just sort of neaten the edges. Actually, change that neckline. All right, so that's our basic sketch. Now we're gonna move on to our markers. All right, guys, so I have selected a variety of colors. And we're gonna start with V20 for this piece because I want to go ahead and do the shade on her eyes. As well as on her teeth. I'm at, I usually go with like a blue-green shading scheme but for, for, sh for shadows um, or a blue violet. But for this piece, since there's so much pink, I really wanna enhance that. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with more pink and pinky tones. And then. Next up, I'm gonna use a base color of E20. And I'm just going to apply that all over her skin, directly on top of the pink. And you see, you start losing some of it. So you might wanna kind of try to work around it if you need to keep those lines, or you might wanna go back and redraw those lines depending on your illustration needs. We're gonna lose her nose so many times in the process of this piece. And we are working on Strathmore Plate Bristol. And this is in one of their visual art journals. And my markers are in need of refilling. So they're being a little more smear-tastic than normal. All right, so we've got our 
base coat down. Um, I'm actually going to pause here and see if I've got a refill for E00, which is what I used. All right, so tried refilling it. Didn't really want to take a refill. So quite possibly that's not the problem and I may just need to change out the brush. We will find out. So I'm using the same color to add my next layer. This is a great way to help stretch your Copic marker collection. I'm sure this is a tip all of you guys know because y'all are all super smart, but I know a lot of beginners think they need a bunch of colors and a bunch of colors is nice to have. Um, you know, can make blending easier maybe, but using the colors you have effectively is also a great way to uh, grow as an illustrator and uh, make use of your materials. And if you want a diffuse blend, then you apply the next layer immediately. You don't give your markers a chance to dry. If you want a soft, subtle, or I'm sorry, if you want a sharper blend where you get like good delineation between colors, you wait until that first layer has had a chance to dry and then you go ahead and you begin applying your second layer. And regarding markers, if there's ever a technique or a tutorial that you guys would like to see me cover, please let me know. I am always interested in, you know, figuring out what you guys need, learning about what's gonna help you guys the most. And I am not a mind reader. So you letting me know what helps is a huge help. So next we're gonna switch over to Blick Studio in 095, which would be Shell. And I have talked about Blick Studio so many times. I really like their markers. I think the Studio Brush markers are high quality markers and I definitely highly recommend them. If Not only if you are just getting into markers and you want to build up a collection because this is a great way to do that. They're very affordable. Um, but also if you already have an alcohol marker collection and you're looking to add some new colors to it in an affordable way. And I've written about Lick Studio brush markers a few times at natosoup.blogspot.com. And I also have a starter recommendation list. So if you're looking to put together a collection of alcohol markers and you want to know where to begin, you can check that list out. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to go in with Copic Tea Rose. And that way, the paper will handle some of my blending for me. <clears throat> then we're going to grab shell again. And we're just going to blend out a little bit. Not too, too much. Since tea rose is such a lovely color. And heighten some of the drama here on her cheeks and set those aside for a moment. And then we're gonna switch over to E51 Milky White. And I like to do my blush toning sort of in the middle of when I'm doing my skin tone because that allows the blush to really blend and look like it belongs on the figure. All right, looking, looking good, looking good. Swing on over to B20. Not all the way finished with our skin tones, but now is a good time to start adding in our shadow color. And that way, like the blush, it will get sort of mixed in and it'll look blended and a little more natural. And at this stage, we can always blend that back a little bit. Oh, okay. Just started to leak. Let's see. Dab. 
some of that extra off on a napkin. I think my hands might be a little too hot. I'm gonna have to fix that now. That's okay. And theoretically that shouldn't happen if you store your alcohol markers properly, which is horizontally, which is how I store them. But you know, that's not always go as planned. All right, so we're gonna go back to E51 and fix some of these areas up because it did desaturate quite a bit, which is fine. Kind of adds a dreamy appearance to it. And considering its shadow, we kind of want to desaturate it anyway. And then, we're going to switch over to, let's see. I guess we're gonna go ahead and do E34. So with this marker over color lead line art style, you have a couple of options. You can opt for a lineless appearance in a grab E31 and go a little bit back in time, knock it back a little bit in color. Add a little bit more pink with R30. And then even more, but just a little with RO2. And then finally, we'll add some cute little freckles with E13. And with freckles, I do them in, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. I do them in two sizes, sometimes three, where I have like the oblong sort of freckles. And then I have like just the very careful little dot freckles. And I usually do freckles in a couple of stages because freckles tend to be um, a couple different colors. All right. Zoom out a bit. Next up, <clears throat> we're gonna do her hair and her eyes. We're gonna start with deep orange. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the entire center of the eyes. And then we're gonna start doing the hair. And you guys can probably tell, but as we work, that pink becomes incorporated. That's why it helps to pick a color that complements the skin tone. Skin tone is usually what's gonna look weird the most, most noticeable. And since we don't have a line art kind of allow us to be lazy we need to work carefully that's okay that's when uh, the super brush really comes in handy because it can get into tight corners and is capable of both broad and fine lines Right, that is our first layer. Go ahead now, maybe let it dry a little more, but we're gonna at least start with our second layer in the eyes using the same color. And 
So go ahead and do in her eyebrows. Oh, and I missed her little cheek curl. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. And you'll note that the prior layer is lighter. So we're getting the most out of our markers. And just like with watercolor, every layer you want to try and cover a little less than the layer before. Now we can switch to another color, E08, which is just brown. Oh, went too far on that one. And because Kara's eyes are the same color as her hair, usually work on them at about the same pace. And you can always go back and do a bit of blending out with the prior color. And I'm gonna give that a chance to dry. All right guys, that's had a chance to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead, do another layer. And it's so much easier to match your colors like this too. Using your marker to its full potential is just highly recommended. That's all I'm gonna say. Highly recommended. Y'all should do it. Although I'm not really getting a lot of color build up anymore with this color, so. But as you can see, we're not really getting any wax resist with the pink color Eno lead that we used to sketch this in. With hair, I don't necessarily really want soft blends. I usually want harsher transitions. So I'm gonna grab a red for the inside of her mouth. It's Neo Pico Y558, hopefully will work. I wanted something that was sort of a red violet. And this one was one of a few markers sent by my friend Kabocha. And you guys can check out an overview video with these here on the channel. I know you guys love alcohol markers. Give it another layer. But basically, this is the method that artists will use to do a lineless look for their alcohol markers. Or one of the methods, some people will actually use graphite. I'm really hesitant about using graphite with my Copic markers. It's just not a thing I do. All right, so next to Lee, we will use E47 dark brown to go ahead and do another layer on her hair. And in her eyes, so right there. Right there. and then in her hair. Now I'm just gonna go really light-handed with her hair, her eyebrows, little side curl there. All right. I think we've got that. So that is mostly leaving us with her shirt 
and the K A R A. So I have, hmm, I have some purples. I also have some pinks. So I think with her shirt, I'll go with the lighter selection. And this was picked to be about the same color. as the lead and I will tell you guys the color I chose in a second and that would be Blick Studio Rose Petal go ahead and give it another layer this is definitely a color that you can build your color up and get the most from it Especially, that's what makes these thirsty papers. They will definitely drain your marker. I should caveat that. But it's what makes them really nice is you can get like two or three layers with some markers and just really work those colors, build those colors up. And then while that's still wet, we're gonna go in with Prismacolor Mulberry Light PB52. And we're going to blend that back out at least somewhat. With some of these uh, fluorescent -y colors, you can end up with some really weird color breakdown, color chromatography, if you uh, blend it too much. So sometimes it's just best to leave it as is, especially with this hot pink here that we're gonna use next. And actually, I wanna do a three color build up to that. So we're gonna start again with the Blick Studio. I'm gonna leave the tops mostly unfilled. I'm gonna fill that in while I'm at it. And when it end up losing some of that line work. All right, next PB177. And that is a very hot pink. Honestly, it's a color that makes me a little nauseous when I look at it. It like messes with my brain because it goes down so hot. Fortunately, it dries a little darker than it goes down, but it still makes me <laughs> a little nauseous. This is one of those colors that doesn't like to blend out well, so we're gonna try it, but it may not work super well. So, black with back with the blick will work from inside the color and draw it out into the next. Not that it really, that's not really how alcohol markers work. You're not really pulling one color into the next. You're really just And then we're gonna grab PB55. All right, and then we'll blend out, or at least attempt to. Some of these fluorescents are kind of weird. And we'll give that a chance to dry. And we're going to grab, actually need to take a second to swatch. So I think I put away the color I need. I did, of course I did. Let's see if I can then retrieve it. Yes, okay. So we're going to use V12. And you don't, have to do this and we're gonna grab a blender blend out a little over here as well all right then we'll grab v04 and just tighten that shading up a little bit. And then I want to 
to line this. And this is where it's gonna all fall apart. You don't have to line this. You can leave it like this. You can work tighter. Um, it's really up to you and your preferences. But I'm gonna wanna line this with V28 eggplant. It's a very dark purple, but I wanna give this a chance to dry first. All right, so I also want to try lining with E49 dark bark. So important thing about doing line art or lining is you need room to move your arm. So if you're like me and you have a cluttered desk, then you're gonna need to move some stuff over. First thing I wanna use, do is I wanna line her eyes. Gonna come in and grab one of the pinks. Do a little dot right on each side of the eye. Now, you don't have to line it with a marker. If you don't like the line you're gonna get from a marker, it always puts down a heavier line. You can use pretty much any inking pen of your choice because it doesn't matter at this point if it's alcohol marker proof because you finished using your alcohol markers for the most part. However, this is also an opportunity to touch up some areas, which is what you see me doing here. So that's what it looks like so far with E49 as a liner. And then we're gonna go in with V28. We're gonna try to be really light-handed because Copic Marker does have a tendency of spidering and feathering out. Blending out, I guess. You can also go back over it with your pink if you want and fix or re-add some of those lost details like the nose or tighten up the line on the mouth a little bit. And of course, that leaves us adding in white details and my white additive of choice is a white signal. And we can also use it to tighten up our letters a little bit. We are basically about done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it inspiring. If there is something in particular you'd like to see me cover on this channel, particularly with alcohol markers, please let me know. You can do that via email. You can do that via the comment section here, or you can join my Patreon community and let me know on there. I am always looking for suggestions for new content and I want to know what you guys want to know. I want to help you out. So let me know what you'd like to see me draw in future uh, alcohol marker videos. And please don't ask, don't please don't just ask me what alcohol marker you should buy because that happens a lot and I've covered that ad nauseum here on the channel and on the blog. And um, my answer is going to be Copic and Prismacolor and Blick Studio Brush Markers are all great. They're high performers. The Blick Studio Brush and the Prismacolors are affordable. So if you're on a budget, those are what I'd recommend. And I do not recommend the AliExpress markers. And I don't recommend the Ohuhu markers. And I don't recommend whatever junky alcohol markers pop up on Amazon or on Super Sale. When it comes to those sort of markers, you often get what you pay for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon. And I hope y'all have a great day. Bye guys. Oh. 
And before I forget, if you enjoyed this art, if you want a badge like this or a small bust up chibi commission like this, it would be about $30. And you can contact me on how to get one via my email. And you can find my email over in the about section at natosoup.blogspot.com. So I hope you guys, again, have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.